Welcome to Holly EFI Training Part 26. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up a base calibration file that we can upload to our HP or Dominator boxes. Also taking a look at the general tuning procedure for working with our fuel, spark timing, and idle control. So we're going to just learn the general order of operations that you should move in when you're calibrating everything and getting a fresh installation of your Holly system on your vehicle. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check everything out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at creating a base global file in our Holly EFI software and then going through the generalized tuning procedure using our HP or Dominator box on the application we're working with so we know how to go and calibrate or start our calibration process and what order of operations to move in so we feel confident with all the material that we've learned so far in the training course. So we're going to be focusing on doing our fuel tuning, our spark timing tuning, going in and setting up our idle control, and then going in and making sure all of our system parameters and sensor configurations are going to be set up. Um, and I'm going to be just kind of doing, again, a, a top-down view of looking at this, just taking more of a generalized approach. So let's jump in and start our process. So the first thing I'm going to go is to open global file. I'm going to select a file that's suitable for my application. Now in this situation, I'm going to be just saying I have a generic application here. So base cals would be appropriate to start with. You could be a little bit more specific if you know the custom cals here. If you're working with Ford Coyote, you could jump in here and select one of these options. Um, that would probably be better suited for that. But if I'm working with something that's a custom application that might be kind of an oddball of uh, parts, a mismatch of parts, the base cals here will be sufficient. And we want to choose something based on what we're working with. So whether it's going to be a throttle body base injection or a carb retrofit or a multi-port fuel injection. I'm going to be assuming I have a multi-port fuel injection option here. I'm going to select any of my MPI options. It doesn't really matter because we're going to go in and just essentially rewrite everything in the file. So I'll select here this, um, this option. Looks like it's going to be the fifth option here. Doesn't really matter again. So I'll just click open. Now, first thing I'm going to do is send it over to my Dominator box. So I have my Dominator powered on, my engine is powered off. So the engine's not on, and so it's key on engine off status. I'm able to uh, communicate with my Dominator. I have my USB cable plugged into my laptop. I also have it plugged into my Dominator. So I'm ready to do an upload of that file. And we haven't built the file out, but I still want to go and just send it over to my Dominator. So I'm going to go and sync with my ECU. So first off, it's going to know that a whole bunch of things are different. You can see that it said it's failed. It's not syncing because we have to send the file to the ECU. So we're going to go to send to ECU and let it sync. We can see it's synced and it sent that base calibration over. So let's click OK. Now the next step here is going to jump into our system ICF and we're going to start to configure the details for the setup we're working with, starting off with our ECU configuration. Now, if I have an HP box, I'll be selecting that on my drop down here or a Dominator box. In this case, I have a Dominator, so I'm going to select the Dominator. If you can afford it, the Dominator is going to be definitely the best option. It gives you a lot more flexibility for logging, um, for configuration setup, and it's just a lot more powerful in comparison to the HP. You will be limited, especially in a race application, to the HP box. So it's worth spending the additional money, about $1,000, on the Dominator system. Next. We're going to find engine parameters and we're going to go through and set up our details here. These are things that have to be right or our fuel table isn't going to be configured right or the way it's going to be turning the fuel flow rate request or VE percentage into an injector pulse width is going to be incorrect. So we need to make sure we get our details specified right here. So the engine, we're going to find number of cylinders on this generic application is going to be eight cylinders. The engine displacement, it's going to be a 6.2 liter. So in this case, I'm going to be changing my cubic inches to 378 and click enter. Now the load sensing type, we have some options. I'm going to assume that it's speed. we're going to be working with speed density base. This is going to be pretty much the best choice for most applications. It's not going to be alpha N. We're not going to have a radical camshaft or ITBs installed on this. I don't need a combo option. The VE based is an option. It's, it works pretty well, but to keep things simple right now, to get my engine up and running, I will choose speed density, which will make my fuel table uh, based on fuel flow rate and then my, my map sensor input to my fuel and spark timing table as my primary load source. So that's what I want on this application. We'll click yes. The fuel type here, we need to use what kind of fuel we're using. We can see gasoline, E85, or methanol. This is going to be specifying what the fuel density is going to be. So it's going to understand how uh, a little bit better to turn the, the fuel flow rate command into an injector pulse with based on the density of the fuel type we're working with. In this case, I'm working with gasoline, but I'm going to be choosing. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.